Hey guys, welcome to my 35 week bump date. I almost said appointment. <laughs> I'm losing it. Five or less more weeks to go. So we're getting into the home stretch here. Definitely nesting, definitely trying to prepare as much as I can in these last couple weeks and also just kind of soak in time with my two kids before another one joins and our world kind of gets turned upside down for a little bit. It's hard because I've been preparing them that a new baby is coming, but they don't really, I don't think they really understand it. Of course, my two-year-old definitely does not understand what's about to happen. And if I could explain it to them more, I would, but it'll just be a little bit of growing pains and then it'll be like she was always with us, just like how it was when we went from one to two. It was a little bit of growing pains in the beginning and now we can't imagine our lives without Porter. So it'll be the exact same with baby girl. It'll just be a little bit of an adjustment at first. It will help that uh, I hope to keep a lot of the same routine. My oldest has preschool four days a week. That will stay the same until May when school ends. And with my youngest, he's not really going to school until next year, but I hope while Anthony's on paternity leave, he can at least take Porter to some of the story times at the library to try to keep some routine going on so we'll see how it goes. I don't know why I opened with all that. It's just been on my mind I guess. So anyway, 35 weeks. Baby is the size of a honeydew melon, which is huge. It said baby's about five pounds now. So really really big. It'll be really interesting to see how big this baby is. My first was like seven pounds 15 ounces I think and my second one is like eight pounds three ounces so is she going to be the biggest or is she going to be the smallest because she's a girl it'll be interesting to see she was small when we did the anatomy scan like 30 something percentile baby's kidneys are fully developed they're making urine they've been making urine also making the first bowel movement which is that black tar meconium and baby is now in distinct sleeping patterns, which I definitely think is true because I can def like, it used to be that she was just active all the time. I now I definitely feel it coming in spurts. Like she's awake for a period of time, then she's asleep for a period of time. As for me, how I'm doing, as good as I can be at 35 weeks, I guess. Heartburn has definitely ramped up. I'm taking tons during the day especially in the evening, multiple times in the evening. That's when it's the worst, but sometimes during the day as well. Just a lot of like indigestion, but I'm staying on top of it with Tums, so thank goodness there is Tums in the world. Headaches, I haven't had any, which has been nice to not have to deal with at least one symptom. I've had a lot of like pelvic pain, especially first thing in the morning when I'm like getting out of bed. I think if I'm just like in, one position for a long time like my pelvic my pelvis bone just gets really sore so that hasn't been fun braxton hicks coming and going they're not as much as they used to be i feel like it's either that or i've just gotten more used to them i don't know but i feel like i haven't really felt them too much in the past week baby i'm feeling more of her the past like two weeks i I feel like she was lazy for a little bit and I didn't feel her as much or I didn't think I was feeling her as much but this week I definitely feel her a lot more so I don't know if it was just growing but I don't know I don't know what it was but I definitely feel her more she's definitely not as crazy wild movements as it was but I definitely think it's just her like moving or running out of space. Feel her, feel the hiccups, feel her movements. So that's been really reassuring. Uh, you probably have all noticed, but I went and cut my hair this past weekend. I mentioned it before, but I wanted to get it cut because when you're nursing, you just, the last thing you want is your hair all in the way. 
and then once baby starts getting more mold, I start pulling your hair and it's just a hot mess. So I prematurely chopped it before the baby came. It's a little shorter than what I wanted. I was hoping to get it like here, but it'll grow. So yes, this is one of the things I did to prepare for baby coming. My back has been fine. Um, sometimes in the evenings it'll hurt a little bit. Still wearing the belly band though. I definitely think that helps. Along with preparing for baby, I've been packing the hospital bag. It's basically ready to go. I do need to put in like an extra long charger cord. Uh, and then I wanna bring like a sound machine. And then Anthony needs to pack his stuff. But I have, I'm looking at it right now. I have clothes packed for baby girl and um, some headbands. Oh, I wanna add the letter board to that too. So I do need to do that. I've got clothes for me, a robe, brush, um, nipple ointment, and um, just like travel sized shampoo, conditioner, deodorant, all that good stuff. So I feel good about that. At least it's like somewhat ready to go. I still need to put the infant car seat in the car. I plan to do that by 36 weeks. So I guess by next week, because I'm 35 weeks. Um, just to have that ready to go. I don't remember like how early I put it in with my first two kids, but I feel like by this time, at least for my first, I definitely had the car seat in and this time. I'm just like, eh, I got time. So I definitely need to add that. I've also went and bought some more supplies for a baby. So I got vitamin D drops, which is essential if you're breastfeeding, because the baby doesn't get vitamin D from your breast milk. I bought gas drops because a lot, a lot of times babies, and especially my kids, have had issues when they're really little just with like gas bubbles going through and causing them pain. So I got some of that, more nipple ointment, and some more um, breast bags for breast milk. I'm gonna try and get a big stash of breast milk. We'll see how I do because I wanna have a good supply. Still peeing all the time, getting up multiple times a night, at least two, usually it's about two. Always thirsty, drinking a lot, which is good. I don't feel like I've been overeating too much. I've actually been nauseous the past couple days, only in the evenings, it's like I'm back in the first trimester again, which is crazy. I've never had nausea like reappear in my pregnancies at the end, but this one it is, and it's really annoying, and it's always like around dinner, and I don't wanna eat because I just feel nauseous, and then always by the end of the day, like I'm tired, I'm sore, I'm uncomfortable, I'm trying to get the boys to bed. Like the evenings are the worst time of day for me because I'm just like, over it mentally, physically, and then to add on nausea on top of all of it, it's just really, really tough for me every day in the evenings. So that has not been fun. <clears throat> I had my most recent doctor's appointment. It was, I guess it was for my 34 week checkup. I didn't even vlog about it like in my normal vlogs because it was so boring and I knew it was gonna be so boring, so that's why I didn't really vlog it so I'll just recap it here for you guys again it was really boring so I went and left a urine sample and they called me back and they got my weight and I looked at the notes and I have not gained any weight since my last appointment two weeks ago so that was pretty surprising I feel like I've been gaining a lot every week and then now I've just kind of been at a standstill. So I've gained about 20 pounds overall, which is basically like right on track to my other pregnancies. I took my blood pressure, so that was fine. My doctor came in and asked if I had any concerns. I did talk about how I feel like baby's movements have changed a little bit, she said. If you haven't felt baby like in a two hour period, like definitely give their office a call or go to the hospital. But the movements will be changing a little bit but just with like baby getting so big and just running out of space, which is basically what I thought she was gonna say. So she did measure my belly. I'm measuring right on track like I am every single time. 
and she found the heartbeat right away. She said it was like 140 something. I don't really remember. So that was good. She said everything was she said everything was uh, right on track. It, it was super fast appointment. I knew it was gonna be the 34 week and the 32 week. They're always like so boring. So she said, come back in two weeks. So then I'll be 36 weeks. And she said, they will check my cervix to see if I'm dilated at all. And I'm really, really hoping that I'm dilated at least a little bit so she can hopefully strip my membranes and try to get something going. I think at that appointment, they're also gonna do the group B strep test, which is never fun. So yeah, that was my last appointment of like not getting undressed. From here on out, I'm gonna have to take my pants off at every appointment. So I'm not looking forward to that. Cervix checks are not fun. I mean, duh. Uh, but I am curious to see how I'm doing and if I'm dilating at all. So I'm really hoping I am. I'm really hoping I have her before 40 weeks. But I guess we will see. Uh, but yeah, that was it. So I went and made an appointment. My next appointment, which is just in two weeks. So yeah, that was it. That was the whole appointment. So it was really boring. That's why I didn't vlog it at all. I knew it was going to be boring. But the next, starting with the next one, is going to be at least insightful and we'll figure out how I'm doing. So before that appointment, I wanna to try to start preparing for labor as much as I can to try to get myself like on the right track. So I'm planning on doing nipple stimulation, lots of walking, and I went to the store today and I bought dates. I've never had a date before and I'm really kinda of nervous. I'm like a texture person. I guess it's dried fruit. I thought it was a nut. It shows how much I know. But I guess you're supposed to eat like six a day, every day, to like, not that it puts you into labor, but it like softens your cervix or like gets you ready for labor or something like that in that aspect. So I'm gonna try and eat dates every day. We'll see what I think about them. I haven't ate one yet. So I plan on doing that. Apparently there's some Starbucks drink that puts you into labor. So I need to try and like try it out. It's like a venti raspberry leaf tea with lemonade in it or something. And the raspberry leaf tea is supposed to act like the dates do and just kind of like soften your cervix and kind of get you ready for labor. But supposedly it puts people in labor. So I need to go and try that and see if that will help me. So if you have any natural ways of inducing labor, please put them down in the comments below. I am willing to try anything. Well, that's not true. I'm not willing to try anything. Like there's people that will drink castor oil. I am not willing to do that. They, there's a lot of controversy with that and um, it could be harmful to the baby. So I'm not gonna do that. And then there's a lot of things that people swear works that is kind of more like a myth. So I'm not gonna do things that haven't really been proven. In my first two pregnancies, I didn't do anything extra because I wanted to carry the baby as long as I could, just with like birthdays and things working out like that. But with this baby, I really want her to come early so I have enough time between her birthday and Grayson's birthday, my oldest. His birthday is April 11th. So I'd like her to come in March. Hopefully she comes in March. I don't know how early my doctor will schedule an induction. I have not asked that yet. Maybe I'll ask at the next appointment. I also need to ask her like what the hospital policies are. Like, am I allowed to have visitors? Do I have to wear a mask? Like, I don't know how any of that stuff is. When I had my first, the pandemic hadn't happened. So it was like no restrictions. When I had my second, we were in the midst of the pandemic. And so it was only Anthony and I allowed. We had to wear a mask and I couldn't have any visitors. So we'll see what the new guidelines are. So I need to ask about that too. But hopefully I can start preparing my body for labor and hopefully she comes soon so then I can just start 
the healing and recovery process and you know kind of start to get my body back a little bit other symptom wise i'm mostly just like tired which is like totally where i am right now like as i was saying tired physically tired emotionally like it just it's hard to get comfortable at night i still have pregnancy insomnia here and there i get out multiple times to pee so i'm not sleeping through the night so just definitely not getting as much sleep as I would like, but it's totally normal. I think that's gonna be it for this vlog. I didn't think I had much to talk about, but now I guess I did have a lot to talk about. I don't know. So that's gonna be it for 35 weeks. Come back next week for 36 weeks. We'll see how I'm doing and hopefully I can start getting ready for labor and preparing my body so definitely stay tuned because baby's gonna come in the next couple weeks i'm so excited you don't want to miss any of that content so make sure to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time bye